Hey there, and welcome back. And I'd like to do a bonus lesson this week. And the bonus lesson I'm going to do is animating. So let's animate this uh, style frame and let's make it uh, into something interesting. So how would I do that? Well, the first thing I would do is I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, it's 30 frames a second. It's 91, so it's three seconds long. It's too short for me. Let's make it uh, 300 frames. So that's about 10 seconds. I like to make a lot of things around 10 seconds in length if I'm just making something to make something. Um, immediately I see my Cinema 40 file is needs to be updated. So let's go ahead and load that up and let's make it uh, 10 seconds as well, which would be 300 frames. We'll drag that out. There we go, we'll save that. Jump back into After Effects here and there we go. So now I can extend it out. So that's what I see. So I would like to see maybe the planet just slowly rotating. I'd like to see this uh, shape layer slowly rotating. Maybe a camera move where we come, you know, from the top here and come resting down. Um, or we could go side to side. I don't see any type of crazy camera move. Um, something like this where we have a very powerful style frame, I'd like to a lot of times just very you know, cinematically lead into that shot, whatever that may be. So. I'll, I'll try a camera move side to side or uh, top to bottom. So I've got my camera in here and it's important to say that my cinema project here, my cinema file is reading my comp camera. So it's, you know, defaults to cinema 4D camera, but when I extracted everything in the design part, it brought the camera in here. So I changed this to comp camera. So it reads it. So now if I, uh, if I move this, not, not everything's going to move here, but you can see that it's reacting to the camera. So I need to make everything else, this is gonna kind of screw me a little bit, but I need to make everything else 3D to react to the camera as well. So uh, the first thing is this texture, it's probably gonna throw this texture off. So what I'll do is I'll take a screenshot. Yep, and you can see there it's gone, right? So I need to, we talked about how the center of the cinema scene was zero, zero that camera is also looking at that zero, zero as a center point. And this texture is at 950 by 462. So I've got my screenshot, I'm gonna make this 3D and it's really jacked up here. You can see it's really close to the camera. Um, let's maybe rotate it on the Y so it's a little more flat. I'm also gonna scale it way down here. Scale it down even more. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna turn off the light, except lights, so I'm gonna turn that to off. There we go, there it is. So I don't necessarily want this landscape to react to the lights, which is why I said, turn off the light. So I'm just gonna kind of line this up. Uh, I'm gonna move it back on the X as well and adjust the Z. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, let's see here, I was to scale it up just slightly. So now if I go back and I hit my uh, screenshot, so you can see it's different, it's definitely different. And if I was spending a lot of time on this, I'd probably try and get it lined up a little bit better uh, to what I originally had. But you know, that's a lot of times when you go from design into motion, things aren't gonna be exact how they were uh, in your style frames. And a lot of clients, you know, don't expect it now. Sometimes they do expect it to be just spot on. And you have to just be aware of what your client is expecting from you. Um, but since I'm the client, I don't expect that, right? So there's, that's that. Uh, the smoke's gonna be all screwed up as well. Let's go ahead and make the ground fog. Let's make it 3D as well. And we're gonna zero it out. Zero, zero. We're gonna scale it way down. As well, we're gonna tell it not to react to the lights, except lights off. There it is, and we're gonna rotate it. 
like so and probably scale it up a little bit uh, something like so and then our side smoke back here needs to be 3d zero zero except lights off where are you at scale down well, maybe something like that i don't know and let's go ahead and animate the rotation of the shape layer if we rotate on the z you can see it's rotating there so that's cool and then we'll maybe make it rotate i don't know 35 degrees something like that and if that's rotating 35 degrees, maybe the planet is rotating as well, but maybe it's less. Maybe it's like, I don't know. Let's do the main planet. Let's set a keyframe on the H. So I'll just click here, go to the end, and let's make it rotate 20 degrees or so. Another one, and then I'm gonna right click, uh, animation show F curve. And you can see that we've got ease in, we've got ease out. We don't want that. We want linear, which is right here, linear. So now you can see it's rotating very slightly. Save that back into After Effects. And let's just preview this. Actually, let's go ahead and set the keyframe for the camera. I want it to stop there, but I want it to start Oh, I don't know, maybe, so that's from the top. What's the side look like? I don't know, maybe something like that. And then I wanna bring the foreground texture um, a little bit closer to the camera to give it a little bit of parallax. Bring it down in size just a bit. There, if I move through this. Not the most interesting camera move, um, I'll admit, but it might work. Let me uh, turn this one on. Let me try and just go straight up and down. Actually, let's do a push in. That could be kind of interesting. So you can see the problem here with the texture being cut off on the side. Um, maybe I'll scale it back up. I'll kind of scoot it. My arrow key here, I'll scale up just a little bit more, maybe 16.5. Just has to cover. And let's just push in. Just playing around with the position, the layering of the texture here. Turn my mask. Let's go back to subtract on the mask here. So I'm going to preview this and see what it looks like. Okay, so immediately I can see here, if I preview this, I can see that this noise, this is the glow noise, and it's just way too crazy. I just don't like it. it looked great as a still, um, but in motion, it looks terrible. So I would probably uh, take a look over here. Let's see here. Glow noise, amplitude, frequency, speed. So I see here spread X and spread Y. I'm going to just... I don't know if this will do it or not. I'm gonna turn it way down to like 10. And let's just see what this looks like now. Okay, so that's still not it. So I'm gonna undo that, turn it back to 96. Um, gosh, it's gotta be here in the noise. The 
frequency maybe. If I turn that way down. No, nope, you can still see it moving there. Undo that one. Jitter frames maybe? I'll turn that to zero. That seems to have done something. Yeah, so that works. I think it, uh, whatever that did, maybe if I just turn that up to like 0.1 or 0 0.05. So it's just very, very subtle, but it's enough. It's a little bit of movement there, plus that smoke behind it uh, gives it a little bit of life there. Uh, makes it more interesting to look at. Yeah, actually, that's still too much. I'm going to take it to point zero 0.01. And let's preview this. So now it's previewing. It's looking pretty cool, I think. Um, something that bothers me in movement is the, the shape layer here. It's too perfect, right? Everything else is really moody and has this kind of really cool vibe to it. And it's too perfect. So I think what I'd do is I'd maybe blur this a little bit. And I also want to see these planets, these two little planets. I want to see them slowly rotating too. So let's do that really quick. So uh, the planets would be the first thing I do. Easy way to do that because I already have this big mama planet moving. I can just take these two planets and just parent them underneath here. So you see that they rest underneath this. And that's just by me uh, just dragging. I'm going to do that really quick here. Just dragging until, see how the arrow changes to down right here. So now it's parented under there and they can rotate with the planet. Cool. Okay, so that's the simple fix for that. I'll jump back in After Effects and just need to blur out that shape layer just a little bit. So maybe under blur we could do, there's a lot of different ways you could always blur this stuff. Maybe a directional blur at like an angle kind of like this. So just guessing here, and then I'll just turn it up. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. Maybe a three. No, let's really crank it up. Let's see what this does. Uh, that's cool, it's too much. So maybe 3.5. How's that look? Let's go back here to the... Yeah, I think that that probably works. So that's with and without. With, without. So this kind of makes it a little less perfect. So let me uh, preview this and check it out. Okay, so here's our preview of this. This is starting to look pretty darn cool. Uh, I see a couple things. I see a line here, a black line. Right, and I see this thing right here. Boom, boom. Um, which tells me it's some type of layer. Um, and then I also, the smoke up in here, I don't really see it. So see, you can see it there, but then you don't see it there. So maybe if I turn levels back off. Oh yeah, that's way too much. So let's just adjust this just a little bit. I'm just messing with the gray values here, the tone value. So there, that's much more interesting. Okay, uh, maybe just a hair more. Nope, too much. Let's try that. And then I can see this layer right here. This is what's getting cut off. So what is this? That is the ground fog. So where are we at with the ground fog? It's negative uh, 3.4%. So, I also look at this terrain, like it should sit more up here with the terrain, right? And the terrain position is negative 300. Well, it's only at negative three. So let's go negative 301. It's gonna bring it way up here. Now let's scale it down. And let's use our arrow keys. I'm moving it sideways. Then I'm moving it up. So 
So when I go to the beginning, it's it's cool. The end. Where are we at the end here? Yeah, that probably works too. So let me uh, preview this again. And guys, this is what it this is what uh, it takes to get really good looking motion and that kind of stuff. I do a ton of previewing. Um, I know some of you guys have asked in previous calls and, and in the community, like how, you know, how do you make really good motion? Well, it's a lot of previews. It's a lot of trial and error. I try things, see if they work. I'm not afraid to experiment and just see what works. Like right now, this, now this fog or the smoke coming off the planet, this may be too much. Like in this frame, I don't love it, but in motion, it may look totally different, but I don't know unless I preview, take the time to really look at things. Um, I could turn down my resolution to half to really get through this quicker, um, but I'm gonna leave it full because uh, I want you guys to see how it looks. Okay, so here it is in motion. Looking pretty cool, I'm pretty happy with this. The only thing that bugs me now that I see it in motion is I feel like these rings right here uh, should be a little bit darker. They're too bright. Uh, in the style frame, it worked for me. In this, it doesn't. So the easy way to do that is I just want to kind of feather them out. So I'm just gonna have a mask on this cinema layer. I set it to subtract. And then I'm gonna feather the crap out of it. Uh, maybe something like so. And then I'm just gonna re kind of reposition that. I have to watch this planet because if I if I bring this mask up too high, it's gonna uh, make that planet disappear, and I don't want that to happen. So that's kind of interesting. Go to the end. Good there. So I really like the way that looks right there. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for my mask right there and i'm going to cheat this because this is a 3d layer and we're moving closer but the mass stays in the same place you can see that there so let's bring this guy out here like something like so okay so here's the preview and i dig it very cool. So there is my uh, interpretation of the planet. Um, we could do some some things too, like where we lear learned uh, lower, or excuse me, we learned about uh, the rule of thirds. I could probably position this planet a little bit more down in this area. Uh, looking at it now, it's a little too centered for me as well, but that's okay. I mean, things can be centered sometimes. So, um, but I dig the motion. It's very simple. Uh, it's very cinematic and it works. So that's what I've got uh, for you this week on Tone. Uh, hope you enjoy this little bonus lesson where I animated this. Um, but this is Tone. Uh, you're watching StyleCraft. I'm Cameron. I'll see you guys all next week. See ya.